Welcome to Lesson 2 of Practical Geography or Map Work. Objectives of the lesson. By the end of the lesson, students or learners will be able to 1. Understand a steep slope mountain and a gentle slope mountain. 2. Understand a steep slope valley and a gentle slope valley. Then 3. Understand contour intervals. Steep slope and gentle slope hill or mountain. A hill or a mountain can either be a steep slope or a gentle slope. There are two contours here, contour A and contour B. You will note that both contour A and contour B are all mountains or are all hills because if you check the calibration of A, it is from the lowest to the highest. And the calibration of B is also from the lowest to the highest. So you can see clearly from 100 to 400. And as we said, when the calibration is moving from the lowest to the highest, then it means that the contour is representing a highland, a hill, or a mountain. Contour A is a steep sloping mountain, and contour B is a gentle sloping mountain. Contour A is a steep sloping mountain because you can see that the contour lines are closer to themselves. And contour B is a gentle sloping mountain because the contour lines are far apart. What is a steep sloping mountain? A steep sloping mountain is a mountain that stands almost in an upright position. And a gentle sloping mountain is a mountain that stands in a slanting position. So it will be very difficult to climb a steep sloping mountain than a gentle sloping mountain. Let us apply cross-section to prove that contour A is a steep sloping mountain and contour B is a gentle sloping mountain. So let's do the cross-section for contour A. So you draw a horizontal line to cut across all the contours. Then you draw your vertical axis at the left side like this, and then another vertical axis at the right side like this. Then you mark the vertical axis according to the calibration or the numbering of the contour. So as you can see, 100 is here, so you mark 100 here. Then the second contour is 200, you mark 200 here to the last contour. So the last contour, which is this one, is 1,200. The same thing you do at the right side. Then, as you can see, you trace each of the contour lines exactly on the horizontal line. Watch carefully. Exactly on the horizontal line to the ends of the marking at the vertical axis. So you mark them carefully. Then this is 800. You mark, you trace it to contour 800. The next contour is 900. You trace to 900. So as I said earlier, this is usually done using graph book during an examination. But this example will make us to appreciate or understand the concept behind cross section. So when you get the graph book, you know what to do. Very good. So as you can see, so from here, from this point to this marking is the markings at the left side. Then from here going is the markings at the right side. So over here, this contour tool is what? 1,200. So you trace it to 1,200. The next contour is 1,100, which is this one. You trace it to 1,100. The next contour 
a thousand, you trace it to a thousand, so you trace all of them carefully. So you can see that all the lines that you have traced are closer to each other. Remember, this contour is representing a steep sloping mountain. A steep sloping mountain. So this is 200. You trace it to 200. The last is 100. I learned some contours have been jumped but needed to be replaced. Very good. So what contour is that? Very good. So you end. Then you trace a curve at the end of each marking to assume a pattern like this. Very good. So you can see that this pattern is representing a mountain. So you can see that the mountain is standing almost in an upright position. So this is a steep sloping mountain. You've got the pattern like this because the contour lines are closer to each other. Then the same procedure, you apply it on contour B. You can see that with contour B, the contours are far apart. So you draw the horizontal line to cut across all the contours. Then you draw your vertical axis. We are not using graph book, but permit me to use vertical axis. So you do it at both the left and then the right. Then you calibrate them or you mark them according to the calibration of the contour. So this is 100, contour 100, 100 is here, 200, 200 is here, 300, 300 is here. So you trace after that, then you trace from the horizontal line, that is each of the contours, to the marking. So you do it at the left side. This is the second contour, which is 200. And then this contour is 300. Then this contour is 400. That is the last one. So you see that you are done at the left side, and then you move to the right side. So what contour is this? This line over here, you can see that it is the same 400, right? So you trace it to this 400. So let's go. Let's go. So you can see you trace it to 400 here. Then this is 300. You trace it to 300. All right. So... So very good. This is 300, but you can see that it is not having a, a number or a calibration. The reason is that since the first contour is 100 and the second contour is 200, there is a difference of 100. So definitely this contour is going to be what? 300. And that is the reason why the middle contour is 400. So this contour, although it is not having a calibration or a number, it is 300. Then you move to 200, and then the last one, 300. So you can see that the markings are far apart, okay? The markings are far apart. Then you, 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 you trace a curve at the end of the markings, so you can see that, yes, this is a mountain, but it is a mountain that is lying in a slanting position. So you say that this mountain is a gentle sloping mountain. So it will be very easy for you to climb mountain B than mountain A. Now, let's look at this again. Steep slope and gentle slope valley or depression. So this time around, we are looking at what? A valley or a depression. Now, a valley or a depression can either be a steep slope or a gentle slope. So as you can see, this contour and this contour are representing valley. They are representing valley because if you check the calibration, the calibration is from the highest to the lowest. So you can see over here or this contour, the calibration is very clear. So from 4,000, to 2000. It means that this contour and this contour are all valid. 
because it is only when you are descending a valley that you start from the high level and then you move to the lowest or the low level. But you can see that this contour is a valley, but it is a steep sloping valley. This contour is also a valley, but it is what? A gentle sloping valley. So let's use cross section to explain this concept. So again, you draw a horizontal line to cut across all the contours. Then you draw your vertical axis at the left, then another vertical axis at the right. After that, you mark the vertical axis at the left according to the calibration of the contour. So the lowest contour over here is 100, so you raise it to the last contour. So 7, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100, and 1,200. The same thing, you do it at the right side. Then you trace, remember this time around, the first contour is what, 1,200. So you end here. I want you to follow the difference between the first one and then this one. So again, you come to the the next contour, um, which is uh, 800. You end at 800. I, I leave, it seems one contour has been uh, has been skipped. One contour has been skipped, but we will come back to it. Don't worry. So you come here again. What contour is this? 600. You trace it. Then, since you are descending, the next one is 500. Yes. Yeah? You end at 500. The next is 400. You end at 400. Then 300. You end at 300. Then this contour is 200. You end at 200. Then the last contour is 100. So you have descended from 1,200 to 100. You are done at the left side. Now you are coming to the right side. This is the same 100. So you trace it to 100, followed by 200. You trace it to 200. Are you following? Then 300. Very good. The next is 400. Very good. Then you move to 500. Very good. Then you move to 600, very good, 700, right? Then 800, 900, 1,000, very good. So I think um, this one has been jumped, but it will be replaced. That is 1,100, yes? We escape this one. So what contour is that? That is 900, yes. 900. Then you trace a curve at the end of each of the lines. So you can see that you are descending. Very good. So this is representing a valley. A valley which is steep-sided. So this is a steep-sided valley or a steep-sloping valley. The same way, this contour is also a valley, but the contour lines are far apart. So you apply the same procedure of cross-section. So 2,000, 3,000, and then 2,000, 3,000, and then. So this is just a rough sketch that will enable you to understand the concepts behind cross profile or cross section. So 4,000, you trace it to 4,000. 3,000, you trace it to, to 3,000. 2,000, very good. So this is also what? 2,000. So you trace it down 2,000. Then 3,000, trace it to 3,000. Then 4,000, very good. Then you draw a curve at the end of the marking. So this is a valley but a gentle slope.
sloping valley. A gentle sloping valley. Contour line intervals or contour interval. Contour interval is the difference between two contour lines. Contour intervals can be known by calculating the difference between two immediate contour lines. So contour A and contour B. So we are coming to study what is called contour interval. Now, what contour is this? It is 100, right? Because this side is equal. All these sides are what? 100. That is the reason why we define contour lines as lines that are used to show places of equal height. So the height over here is equal to this one, which is what? 100. So from 100, you move to 200. Now, what are the two immediate contours here? Now, this contour and this one, and they are all having calibration, so 100 and 200. So you know the difference. So what you are supposed to do is that you take away or you subtract 100 from the 200, you are going to get 100. So the contour interval is what? 100 meters. Contour lines are usually calibrated in meters or feet. So the contour interval is what? 100. Now, in calculating the contour interval, you cannot take away 100 from 500 because they are not two immediate contours. You cannot do that, but you do that from the two immediate contours. So you take away 100 from 200 because these are the two immediate contours, and you get 100. So the contour interval is what? 100. Then you come to contour B. The first contour is 100. This contour is not numbered, but the next contour or the third contour is 200. But to get the contour interval, you cannot take away 100 from 200 because you have jumped another contour. So you will not know the contour interval. But you come to two immediate contours. This is 200. This is 250. So these are what? The two immediate contours. So when you subtract 200 from 250, you are going to get a difference of 50. So the contour interval over here is 50 meters or 50 so this is how contour interval is being calculated. Thank you very much. So for more videos, you visit Educare and Kids. See you in lesson three. Thank you very much.